Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Bobby, aka Paginator, and I'm here today with a spoiler free review of The Inheritance of Orquidea Divina by Zoraida Cordova. So thinking about um, making a September wrap-up video, I just really didn't want to. And I realized there was only one book that I read in September that I'd even have something to say about. Which tells you how crappy the reading month was for me. So, we're just going to talk about this one. So as I said in the beginning, this is The Inheritance of Orquidea Divina. And I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that right. Um, the title character Orquidea, um, which means orchid in Spanish, is the matriarch of the family. And we meet two of her grandchildren and no three of her grandchildren and one great grandchild who inherit some interesting powers from her um, the montoya family is her family and she has always lived in this valley called four rivers and the her house that she lived in just kind of appeared there um and she's also been like very sus suspected by the community of being weird perhaps being a witch like They've always been like, okay, that Montoya lady, Orquidea Divina, that lady, she's a bit odd. Well, she decides to call her grandchildren and whole, like her whole family together because she knows that her time has come to pass on. And instead of dying, she is transformed into a Ceiba tree, which if you Google, it's C-E-I-B-A, Ceiba tree, um, there are beautiful gorgeous tall trees with big massive like bases and roots and just they're super gorgeous well she transitions into this tree but b shortly before then she's talking about things need to be protected from him from him like and her family aren't sure exactly what's going on so we follow mariman marimar ray and rhiannon rhiannon's the great grandchild and those three specifically were given blessings and powers when Orquidea was transformed into a tree. And they have like living flowers that grow on their bodies. And the story um, kind of follows them for about seven years until they start to come back together to Four Rivers and try to finally figure out what exactly is going on, why their grandmother great grandmother left them these strange gifts and powers and um see if they can figure out at last what she was trying to tell them with her last words the story is told in a non-linear timeline so if you're going to read this book it's important that you pay attention to the chapters because some are going to be about orquidea divina's childhood and then some are going to be about her early adulthood when she f meets her first husband. Others are going to be following these children and grandchildren, both at the time when she calls the family together and years later when they're still trying to figure out the message that she left for them. So be sure that you're paying attention to where at in time you are. But um, you're going to get a lot of Spanish names um, from characters, which... I loved um, not too much Spanish vocabulary in terms of words you have to figure out though which was nice just mostly contained in the names um, and there is it's definitely like magical realism which can be kind of weird so I remember Maggie Stiefvater when all the Crooked Saints was released I went to a launch party where she was there and she said I'm just gonna tell you guys this book is weird and I think that could be said of a lot of magical realism. It's just kind of weird. But this also has the family mystery going on. And you have these different dynamics within the family. Um, Ray, the grandson, uh, one of the three young people is gay. And so we see how that plays out in a Hispanic family. Um, and it's just a very much like family-centered story. So there are some uh, bits of content in here that I feel like are too mature for my middle schoolers, especially the 7th graders, to handle. But I feel like high school and up, you should be fine to read this. Um, 
let's see, I'm checking on something because I know one of you out there will appreciate this. Oh, this is in past tense. You know who you are. One of my viewer friends doesn't like to read books in present tense, so I thought I'd check for them. Yeah, past tense, past tense, past tense. Um, I'm not sure what else I can tell you about this book without spoiling some things, but I will tell you that it is really lovely. The cover, of course, is gorgeous to look at, so if nothing else, it's a beautiful addition to the shelf. If magical realism isn't your thing, that might mean, this might not be the book for you, but I really enjoy it every once in a while. I don't want a steady diet of magical realism because, as I said, it can get a little bit weird, but this was really nicely done and it makes me want to read more by this author. I've only read one of her other books and I know she's got several out, so I'm going to have to pick one of those up pretty soon. One last item of business before we sign off um, is that October is my birthday month and I am feeling the need to like treat myself to a little bit of self-care and I know that I've been like buying way too many books lately so I want to do something other than that other than book shopping and you people out there I feel like we have a connection we're like-minded people we like books and that kind of thing but what else do you guys do for self-care um, let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions for me because I feel like all I do is buy books and I need to stop because I've got a ridiculous amount of books that I haven't read and it's out of control. So shoot me some ideas in the comments below. And otherwise, have a wonderful, magical, and bookish day. Happy reading. Adios.